so today's video is not going to be a fun one but i really really think that it is important that we talk about this so please give this video a watch hello youtube and welcome back to the channel so today's video like i already stated is going to be kind of a darker one but also like i stated it needs to be talked about and we're going to be talking about grief today because I have recently experienced it. It is horrible. I don't <laughs> recommend it for anybody. I wouldn't worse wish it on my worst enemy, but I thought that today, as somebody that is experiencing grief, we would talk about things to say and things not to say to someone, particularly things not to say. So. I found a list online and I may skip around some of them just because some of them don't pertain to me. I'm only going to be talking about the ones from my personal experience. And with that, I do want to say that everything that I say is personally my opinion, even though I have gone through my own grief. There are others out there that have gone through it, you know, their own ways. So they may agree with what I say. They may not agree. But like I said, this is my personal opinion and I just hope that you will take it for what it is. So we're going to start out with the things not to say to someone and the list says number one is you'll get through it be strong. I understand the sentiment behind this that you're trying to encourage that person but especially right when the event happens that causes that grief it is a emotional roller coaster like I don't even want to go back to that place it was such a horrible time for me and I only had like a week off of work before I had to jump back in but I don't a lot of these may intermingle so um yeah I'll just kind of let some we may talk about them and like I said some of my thoughts may interlap I forgot to say that earlier but yeah just roll with it another one she or he is in a better place again i understand the sentiment especially with me coming as a christian and the person who i'm talking about is my grandfather that i re lost recently in the year and i know that he was a christian and i know that he's in heaven and like that said i know that he is indefinitely in a better place than us i don't really get as upset about this because this is something that you know us and our family unit tell to each other when we start to feel sad we're like we wouldn't want him back because he is in a much better place so that one's one of those that i don't really agree with but i can understand how somebody would take that because on the one hand you do want your loved one here because you miss them but then on the other hand you're like i mean they are better off once you get past that initial first stage of grief you're like yeah they are better off um this next one it's been a while aren't you over him or her yet mm. this one this one i've kind of had an experience with this one myself i don't want to get too far into that because I don't know if this person watches my YouTube videos or not, but don't insinuate to someone that they should be over their grief. No, I don't care if it's 10 years after that person is gone. That person is gone. Like they are not here anymore. You are changed, especially if it is someone like me with my grandfather that I saw every single day and communicated with and was such a big part of my life you don't just tell that person to get over it no matter how long time has passed your life changed the minute that that person ceased to exist in this life like you are forever a different person no matter if you can get back to your happy bubbly person it's still only going to be at about 90 percent of that the other 10 percent of that is going to be stuck in that grief because you have lost that person so I just get so agitated with that because I'm like, I don't care how long it's been. You do not tell somebody to get over a loved one. Oh my goodness. Are you wanting to be a part of this too? Yeah. See, Penny agrees. 
Honestly, Penny has comforted me while I was crying during all of this, so she's allowed to say something too. But yeah, I'm not gonna go over that one much anymore because I have. Um, he, she lived a long time. At least they didn't die young. I mean, that is kind of insensitive. To I don't see that one's one of those like with me. I don't think anybody has said that to me, but I can understand why somebody would take that the long, wrong way because it's like you know, no matter how long of a life that they lived, you still want them here. Um, God must have wanted her him there because she him was such a good person again that one is just like three where they're in a better place even like my with my pastor and everything has he said something honestly like right when it happened after that is such a blur i don't even remember when somebody have said that but you know again i think that's just one of those things it's for each person you know i personally i know that's true because that's after it happened so many people commented on my grandfather's Facebook page and was saying what a difference that he made in their lives. So, I mean, I personally, I know that's true that God wanted him back because he was such a good person. But again, I can understand why you wouldn't just look at somebody and say that because it might seem insensitive, especially if it just happened. Um, let's see. I know exactly how you feel I'm, again, I get the sentiment. I get the sentiment. You're trying to relate to that person, but in that way, you're kind of like taking the focus off of that person that's going through the grief and kind of putting it on you and saying, oh, I have. And again, I went through that too. That same person, they, they, they pulled that card. So yeah, it, it doesn't help. Like, I understand that you went through it too. And, you know, I can commiserate with you. But know that my experience is different than your experience. And also, if you're trying to comfort me by, you know, putting it out there that you've gone through it too. I mean, or I know exactly how you feel. I've gone through it too. Yeah, I, I get it. But, you know, in that moment, it's selfishly about me. So, you know... And we'll go in, there's things to say to someone in grief. And I think they have a better way of putting that. And then the last one, everything happens for a reason. Life goes on. That's another one of those, like the get over it thing. Life does go on, but it's not going to be the same life as it was before that event happened. Like I, even now I've gotten a lot of my happiness back, but and especially like one of the good things that came out of the situation is that I have grown more in my faith and being trying to be a better person like a better Christian and, you know I do think that my grandfather would have wanted that so you know that is a positive that came out of this and even though you know I am happier because I do have that better relationship with God and with Jesus and getting into the church again I'm still not the same person I was before January of 2023. I'm not, I will never be, no matter if, you know, I've got my, one of my dream jobs now, you know, if I could travel to my uh, dream places, if I could live in my dream place, none of that would still make me 100% the person I was before this happened. Like nothing is gonna replace that. So things to say to someone in grief, I can't imagine what you're going through. I think that one is kind of a better thing if I know exactly how you feel because you're trying to express a sentiment to them that, you know, you feel sorry for them, but it's still putting it on them. Like it's giving them their moment instead of trying to put it on you, if that makes sense. Um, I'm so sorry for your loss. You know, yes, but also if you know the person better, just saying, like, for me at that time, if somebody just said, I'm so sorry for your loss and they were close to me, I would be like, that's it. You don't 
really have anything else to say other than I'm sorry for your loss. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying if you're really, really close to someone, it may seem a little impersonal. Um, I don't know what to say. I wish I had the right words to comfort you. Good. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say to that. Even if you combined, like, I can't imagine what you're going through. I wish I had the right words to say because it's expressing to that person that what they're going through is valid and that there are, there is nothing that you could say that would make the situation better. So that one is really good. Um, you, your family, and your loved one will be in my thoughts and prayers. Nice. Again, kind of generic. I think that would be geared more towards someone like a general acquaintance or like a coworker that you're not really close to. But if you're really, really close to someone, maybe put in, I don't want to say effort because I don't want to make it seem like you're not doing anything just by saying that, but maybe make it a little bit more personal. But again, each person is different. So it's just up to you to know if you know how that person wants interaction like that. Um, they were so nice to me. One of my favorite memories of him was share a happy memory of the person that passed. Yes, I love this. Like I just stated, when after the event happened, there were so many stories on my grandfather's Facebook page that people like in our family, outside of the family shared. And it just reiterated to us how good of a person that he was and what a great loss that we had. And we still, we make jokes and we're like, I wonder what he would say about that. Or remember that time that he, and it makes you feel like that person is there again. And it just gives you a little bit more of a connection with them. So I personally loved that. No, I'm at the point now, any stories that I can get about my grandfather, I will take them and run with them. So yeah. Um, whenever you want to talk, just know I'm a phone call away. Again, you know, that will probably vary person by person and also how close of a connection you have with them. I'm the type of person, I hate the phone. So I don't really like to talk on the phone that much. So probably even a face-to-face -face visit or just like texting would have been okay with me. But yeah, um, he was so, or they were so wonderful. They'll be missed by so many people. That kind of correlates with the memory thing, you know. Um, I'm your friend. I'm here for you. I think that's person by person. If you can't think of anything to say, a hug may be appropriate. And in parentheses, they put um, the C word permitting, you know, the sickness. That again is person by person. I'm not a hugger. I'm not a toucher. Like, I like my mom to hug me. That's pretty much it. <laughs> that sounded weird, but like, I don't care if my mom hugs me, but even like other immediate family members no i'm not i'm not touchy feely no like if you patted me on the back or something which i don't know there were people especially like at the funeral that hugged me and i didn't mind it and that mindset but you know that was right after and i wasn't in my right mind but just feel that person out see if they are the touchy feely kind of person and Lastly, sometimes just be with the person. You don't have to say anything. That is always an option too. And I did want to share this at the bottom because I think that this kind of wraps up everything that I've said. Remember, grieving the loss of a loved one is the worst pain someone can endure. Be respectful and polite. Don't discount anyone's feelings. Even if someone puts on a brave face and looks like he or she is handling it well, don't assume that person is. Show that you care. That one thing, even if someone puts on a brave face and shows that they're handling it well, don't assume that they are. Yeah, that's that was basically what I had to do. Like I got a week off of work. This was back when I worked both of my two, my part-time jobs. I got a week off of bereavement and then I had to go back the next week. I was not mentally ready to go back, especially considering one of my jobs was the elementary school that I went to. And I would just walk in and I would start having all of these memories about me and my grandfather being there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for this. Like I literally started break, almost cried when I went to get breakfast because in the cafeteria, I, we found a picture of me and him eating lunch at my grandparents day. And I was like, this is great. It's great. Love it. 
so i mean i had to seem like i get over it got or got over it fairly quickly and especially my other job was like in front of the public and i'm the type of person i don't like to show my emotions to other people what is my hair doing I don't like to show, show my emotions to other people, especially when you're at the workplace. I believe like you go in, you do your job, you be friendly with people. If you make coworker friends, awesome, but you don't share your personal life. You don't share anything other than what pertains to work and then you go home. That is how I was raised. That is what I personally believe. So, you know, especially working with the public, I didn't want anybody to show or realize I had anything going on in my life. But that that's a story for a different day. That kind of correlates to what I was talking about. But the main thing that I want to be taken away from this video is, like that thing said, grief, that is the worst pain. I literally, for that entire week, I actually have a video on my Instagram talking about what grief did to me, but my whole body shook that entire week and even a little bit afterward like it usually does that when I'm really really hungry my blood sugar drops or you know something like that but I mean it just it I just stood or had a constant shake of just shaking because I, it was just so traumatic and then I would be fine one minute and then the next minute I would be set off in tears I was really tired i didn't really have that much of an appetite. Like it changes you physically and mentally it changes you, emotionally it changes you. Like even t now, yesterday was like the seventh month anniversary of when it happened and I had a horrible day yesterday. I broke down and cried at work, which thankfully nobody in our department really comes in that often so nobody saw me crying yay but it was rough and it still is rough and that when that person kind of implied to me that I should be over it it wasn't even was it four months I think that is still way too soon I mean you shouldn't say it anyway but no it, mm -hmm. I, that was one of those situations I told my mom when it happened. I could just imagine if he was here, he would get so mad about it. Like, just in a different concept. Because he was the person, when I couldn't get a teaching job, he kept threatening. He's like, I'm going to call the news because they say there's a teacher shortage. There's obviously isn't because nobody's hiring you. I'm going to call the news. I'm going to go to the school board. But like, <laughs> that was just how he was. And I was just like, he would be so mad right now if he could hear that. But anyway, that's just me rambling. Be, oh my goodness, somebody else is coming in. Hello. Be conscientious, conscientious, you know what I'm trying to say, about the person that you're talking to. Do not tell them to be over that person. Don't imply it. Don't do anything. Just understand that that person is going through something. That person is changed. Will never be the same again. And okay and never never will be the same and just just be kind just be kind even if you haven't gone through it just know that that person is going through something really really traumatic and just be there for them if nothing else if you can't do anything else just just be there for them that is going to do it for this video. Sorry that it was dark, but this is something that has been weighing on me ever since that situation happened to me. And I was just like, I've got to get this out there, even if one person sees it. But do some research. If you have um, experienced grief on your own, I cannot think of the book title. I'll try to have it either on the screen down below or something. I read a book about getting over grief and it is a Christian based book, but it was really good. It was really helpful in getting me through looking for resources. There are plenty out there. Know that you're not alone. 
and also go check out my Instagram because I did do some videos, like I said, on there about the grief process and everything. And also don't forget to subscribe. My next video will be happier, I promise. Please stick around if you enjoyed this or if you have enjoyed other of my contents because I don't see how you could enjoy this per se. But with that, I will talk to you in the next one. Bye guys.